Hey, welcome to Mini Beginner's Crash Course. My name is Lisa Jung, and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. This course is for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In Season 2, we built a full-stack JavaScript app that could search for earthquake data stored in Elasticsearch. Now, searching for data is one way to learn about our data set, but we could learn so much more when we can visualize our data. We'll wrap up season two by learning how to use Kibana to analyze and visualize earthquake data stored in Elasticsearch, and we'll do so by using Kibana Lens. Today, we'll create a Kibana dashboard that contains panels of various data visualizations. In the upper left corner, we have a table that lists 10 locations with the highest frequency of earthquakes. To the right, we have an earthquake heat map. This allows you to visualize the location and the frequency of earthquakes by color. In the row below, we have high-level metrics about our earthquake data. It shows you the number of earthquakes in our data set, the maximum magnitude, and average depth of earthquakes in our data. In the next row, we have the earthquake magnitude histogram. This graph displays different levels of magnitude that exist in our data set and how many earthquakes have exhibited this magnitude. Lastly, we have a donut chart that shows you the type and percentage of quakes in our data set. So let's create this dashboard with Kibana. From the Kibana homepage, click on the menu icon. From the drop down menu, click on the Dashboard option. Now, Kibana Dashboard lets you easily create views that pull together charts, maps, and filters to display the full picture of your Elasticsearch data. So click on the Create a Dashboard option. It'll take you to the dashboard where you could add and edit visualizations. So the first visualization we'll create is a table that lists 10 locations with the highest frequency of earthquakes. From the dashboard page, click on the select type option. It'll display a drop down menu with various visualization tools. And from this menu, choose the lens option. Kibana Lens is an intuitive UI that helps you create data visualization. Whenever possible, start with Lens as you can create majority of the visualizations with this tool. So first thing we must do is to select the correct data source and the time range in which we want to visualize the data. All of the panels in the dashboard will reflect earthquake data that falls within the chosen time range. You'll see that the dashboard has already chosen the earthquake data view we've created in episode 7. If you have multiple data views, make sure the correct data source is selected. Next, we'll choose a time range in which you want to view the data. So click on the calendar icon to display the drop down menu. In episode 7, we retrieve USGS earthquake data from the past 30 days, so select the last 30 days option. Next, we'll create a table, so click on the downward arrow, then select the table option. Now, we're creating a table that lists 10 locations with the highest frequency of earthquakes. Since location data is stored in the field place, drag and drop the field place.keyword into the editor. It'll automatically create a table for you with two columns. The column top five values of place that keyword lists five locations with the highest document count. In other words, the number of earthquakes. The column count of records lists the number of documents. In other words, earthquakes that have occurred in that particular location. Let's look at the table that we want to create. The final table contains two columns called location by frequency and number of earthquakes. It lists 10 locations with the highest frequency of earthquakes in descending order. We'll change our current table to mirror the final table. From the table page, click on the top five values of place.keyword option. You'll see that the rows reflect data from the field place.keyword. The number of values displayed is set to five. Change this value to 10 to display 10 locations with the highest frequency of earthquakes. You'll see that the table is auto-updated with top 10 values of place that keyword. Now the rows are ranked by count of records in a descending order. 
So let's take a look at the name of the column. It's set to top 10 values of place that keyword. Change this value to location by frequency. The changes you'll make will be auto saved. You'll also see that the table is auto updated as well. Next, we'll update the column count of records. So click on the close option. Then click on the count of records option. You'll see that the table is added to the dashboard. Let's add a title to this table. Click on no title section. In the pop-up menu, type in 10 locations with the highest frequency of earthquakes, then click on the save button. And you'll see that the title has been added to the table panel. Next, we'll save and name the dashboard. So click on the save button. Name the dashboard to whatever it makes sense to you. I named mine Earthquakes Data Visualization and click on the Save button. You'll see that our dashboard is now saved and has been named as Earthquakes Data Visualization. Next, we'll create a heat map. With heat maps, you could visualize the location and the frequency of earthquakes by color. It's an effective way to visualize earthquake hotspots around the world and easily detect patterns. From the dashboard page, click on the select type option, then click on maps. The page will display a world map. Click on the add layer button. Click on the heat map option. Then click on the downward arrow and select the earthquakes data view that we created in episode seven. And you'll see the lens automatically selects the field coordinates. This field contains inner fields called latitude and longitude. And these fields were mapped to a geo point to mark the location of earthquakes. Click on the add layer button. It'll display a pop-up menu where you could further customize a heat map. To create the final heat map, set the resolution to low and click on the save and close button. And you'll see that the earthquake locations are now marked with different colors on the map. Warm colors are associated with the maximum earthquake activity, whereas cool colors are associated with minimum earthquake activity. By looking at our heat map, we could see that states like California and Utah seem to have the most frequent occurrences of quakes. Now click on the save and return button. You'll see that the heat map has been added to our dashboard. So let's give this panel a title. Click on the no title section. In the pop-up menu, type in earthquake heat map and click on the save button. And you'll see that the panel title has been updated. Next, we'll calculate high level metrics such as number of earthquakes, maximum magnitude and average depth and display them on our dashboard. From the dashboard, click on the select type option, then click on lens, then click on the downward arrow, then select metric. Now the first metric panel we'll create is number of earthquakes. The number of documents that fall within the chosen time range will give us this value. In our case, the time range is last 30 days. And to get this value, drag and drop records into the editor. And you'll see that we have a total of 8,145 documents that fall within the last 30 days time range. Let's rename count of records to number of earthquakes as shown in the final dashboard. To make the changes, click on count of records to display the pop-up menu. Under the name section, type in number of earthquakes, then click on the save and return button. You'll see that the panel for number of earthquakes has been added to the dashboard. Next, we'll create the maximum magnitude panel. From the dashboard, click on the select type option, then click on lens. In the next page, click on the downward arrow and click on the metric option. Now we're creating a panel for maximum magnitude of earthquakes found in our data set. So drag the field mag into the editor. And you'll see that it automatically displays median of mag. 
However, we want to display the maximum value of magnitude found in our data set. So let's change this. So click on median of mag. In the pop-up menu, click on the function maximum to get the maximum magnitude. In the name section, update the name to maximum magnitude. Then click on save and return button. And you'll see that the panel maximum magnitude has been added to the dashboard. And the maximum magnitude earthquake is 6.6. .6. Next, we'll create the average depth panel. From this dashboard, click on select type option, then click on lens. Click on the downward arrow and select the metric option. Now, we're creating a panel for average depth of earthquakes in our data. So drag the field depth into the editor. And you'll see that it automatically displays the median of depth. However, we want to display the average depth of earthquakes. So we're going to fix this. Click on median of depth. In the pop-up menu, click on the function average to get the average depth of earthquakes. In the name sections, update this to average depth with kilometers and parentheses. Then click on save and return button. And you'll see that the panel average depth of earthquakes has been added to the dashboard. And the average depth is 20.302 kilometers. In our final dashboard, the three metric panels take up a row. One of the cool things about dashboard is that you could change the size of these panels and reorganize the panels in any way you want. You could adjust the size of the panel by grabbing the lower right corner of the panel and adjusting the size. You can move the panel by clicking on the upper part of the panel and dragging the panel wherever you wish. After resizing and rearranging your metrics panel, your dashboard should look like this. Next, we'll create an earthquake magnitude histogram. To create this histogram, click on the select type option, then select lens. Click on the downward arrow and select the bar vertical option. And you'll see the following page where you could add a field to horizontal axis and vertical axis. Let's look at the final magnitude histogram. On the horizontal axis, the levels of magnitude are displayed. On the vertical axis, we have a number of earthquakes that exhibit the corresponding magnitude. Now drag the field mag into the horizontal axis section. Then drag records into the vertical axis section. And you'll see that it automatically creates a histogram for you with count of records on the vertical axis and mag on the horizontal axis. Let's rename the vertical axis count of records to number of earthquakes. So click on the count of records from the edit menu. In the name section, type in number of earthquakes. Now we'll also change the color of this histogram. From the edit menu, click on the series color option, then click on this pink color here. And you'll see that the color of the histogram has been changed to pink. Let's rename the horizontal axis to magnitude. So click on the close option, then click on mag from the edit menu. In the name section, type in magnitude and click on the save and return button. You'll see that the magnitude histogram has been added to the dashboard. You see many earthquakes exhibiting magnitude level that fall between 0.8 and 1.2, which are pretty mild earthquakes that are not usually felt. We also observe fewer number of earthquakes exhibiting higher magnitude levels that cause different levels of damage. Let's add a title to this histogram. So click on No Title section. In the pop-up menu, type in Earthquake Magnitude Histogram, then click on the Save button. You'll see that the panel title has been added. Lastly, let's create a donut chart that shows the types and percentage of quakes in our data set. From the dashboard page, click on the Select Type option, then click on Lens. In the next page, click on the downward arrow and click on the Donut option. Now let's take a look at our final donut chart. The donut is divided into types of quakes 
in each type is represented by a slice of the donut. To create this, drag the field type and drop it into the slice by section. The size of the slice is determined by how many earthquakes of each type exist in our data set. So drag records and drop it into the size by section. You'll see that Lens has automatically created a donut chart that shows you the type and percentage of quakes that exist in our data. As you can see, the majority of the quakes in our data is of type earthquake. We have a little bit of ice quake in there. And some of the quakes are man-made, such as query blasts, explosion, and other event. So let's create a legend for types of quakes and place it in the upper right corner. So click on the legend logo. It'll display a drop-down menu where you could edit the legend. In the display section, click on the show option and you'll see a legend show up in the upper right corner. The alignment section allows you to specify where the legend should be displayed. Since we want the legend in the upper right corner, leave the default option, which is the right facing arrow here. Then click on the save and return button. And you'll see that the donut chart has been added to the dashboard. If you hover over a slice, it shows you the quake type this slice represents, how many documents are of this type, and what percentage of documents are of this type. All right, so let's give this panel a title. Click on the No Title section. In the pop-up menu, type in Quake Types and click on the Save button. You'll see that the panel title has been added. Then switch to view mode by clicking on that option. You'll see the dashboard in presentation mode as shown in the final dashboard. All right, that's a wrap. You completed season two of mini beginner's crash course to Elasticsearch and Kibana. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you later.